<laughs> well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooks, that gratitude guy, with another gratitude podcast interview uh, regarding the pandemic. And today I have a very close friend of mine. I've known Scott for many, many years out of Spokane, Washington. Just a great guy, Scott Wetzel. Scott, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, sir. Glad to be on board today. You bet. You bet. So let's start out with my first question. In dealing with this pandemic, what is your best coping mechanism? I bet, uh, for me personally, and I think for all the folks in my companies, I tell them to just focus on what you can control. Uh, and that's yourself, first and foremost. And all these things going on out there, it's tragic. It's, it's unprecedented. And at the same time, there's not a whole lot we can do individually about it other than just stay sheltered in place, and then focused on being grateful, which you talk all the time about. Right. And then I remember a comment that Tony Robbins made way back when I went through one of his courses, God, uh, just right after we left each other at Nordstrom, mm -hmm. is he talked about, you know, people spend 90% of their time worrying about something that'll never happen. And then oh, he said, yeah. what if you just focused 50% of the time on something that'll never happen? Think right. of all that time you'd have available up, freed up to go do something productive. That's and I've always kind of operated off that. So I just tell my people and even myself, it's like, just focus on what you can control. And one of the main things you can control are, is being grateful. Yeah. Just absolutely being grateful for what we have. I got a house over or a roof over my head. I got food in the refrigerator. We have heat going. I have three boys that I love, a wife I adore, you know, those type of things. Yeah. And speaking of gratitude, and you just mentioned uh, several really good things. Is there something that's at the top of your list that you're most grateful for if you had to prioritize it? Uh, number one, my relationship with God. And uh, the second thing, not too far right behind it, almost 1A would be my wife, Tracy, who Excellent. I've been married to for almost 30 years now. It's just been just nothing shy of amazing. My three boys. So I always focus on that. And in fact, you know, with your gratitude journal that I use, you know, the thing I do is I talk about my relationship with God in the morning and then my mm -hmm. wife and my three boys. And then I write a fourth thing, which is ever whatever that is for that day. So I would say That's that great. fourth thing for me consistently is just all of the companies that Tracy and I operate and the, the lives that we can touch and have an effect on in those companies by just doing positive things for them to help them go do positive things for others. That's really cool. That's really cool. And I think with somebody who's obviously as driven as you are and what you've done back when, as you mentioned, when you and I were at Nordstrom and the different career paths that we both followed, clearly motivation and inspiration and, and being a driver is all part of it. And that's one of the reasons I've always just enjoyed our relationship. And as a result of that, where maybe people don't have as good of an idea during a time like this, do you have any sort of tips or thoughts or ideas for other people of things to do while they're going through this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I talk about the, the fear factor, right? And people get so bogged down into fear. And on, on one of my talks, you and I were just talking about it. Mm -hmm. We talked about Cortez when he went to the Spanish Inquisition and took over Mexico. And, and when they landed on the beaches of Mexico, he burned the ships, right? right. He got rid of the ships and told his soldiers, there's two things that are going to happen here. We're either going to win and go back with their ships or we're going to lose. Yeah. And they won. And so what I get people to try and focus on are the things that, again, that they have control over and that they can do in a positive mindset every day, whether right. that's reaching out to their customers, reaching out to family, getting outside, enjoying you know, the outdoors, doing whatever they can to have a positive mindset or what I like to call you know, a growth mindset not a scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. I like that too. And I always think abundance is another word I use. Growth versus a scarcity is really good too. So, so last question, as you look back on the Scott Wetzel life, and now of course going through something that's very tough for all of us, do you sort of have a quote or a philosophy or something that you kind of has always guided you that's uh, been through the tough times, the good times, it's maybe sort of a philosophy that you, it's maybe again at the top of the list. Yeah, it's, you know, it's super simplistic. I love how you say, you know, be grateful and never quit. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is it's super simple. Keep grinding. Oh, I like that. Just keep grinding. And, mm -hmm. and it's amazing, David, that the total number of people that just don't succeed because they just stop. Yeah. They just yeah. stop doing what they were doing. They, 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 and they don't even realize that they're this close to right. being successful and they decide to stop. It's like, you know, you are, you've run marathons yourself and me, as you can tell, I haven't, <laughs> but, but one, of the, but I've, you know, it's like Bloomsday. It's 30 straight years of Bloomsday, 30 years of not running it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I look at these people, like you would never run a marathon and just stop at mile 25. 
Exactly. Right? I mean, and that's, that's the thing. So just keep grinding. I like that. Keep grinding. And so much of it is that there, you heard the things about the guy that stopped two inches short of the vein of gold and there's just different ones or one of my all time favorites is having always been a salesperson like you and I, is that's how we first started is they said the average time it takes a salesperson to make a sales call is four calls and the average time it takes a salesperson to get discouraged is two calls <laughs> so, exactly <laughs> so i guess you're not going to make that sale if you stop at two exactly you know? so, exactly yeah yeah so those are those are good well excellent well thank you my friend i appreciate that as i said i'm kind of uh really taking people they know really well and, and just kind of picking their brain and and if it just makes a one difference i notice when i get to do my talks when one person and all the companies that you run the, the feedback that you get it's the same thing if one person says i'll never forget when you said this you're the first person that took the time to say this i always remember when you did that it just makes your day because it's and when you're impacting other lives if you as you act impact many it is also something that's just priceless they're just you can't put a price on it's just priceless. no question so, no no question it's what difference you made in somebody's life not how much money you made or how many cars you drove or anything like that exactly exactly all right, all right. well thank you my friend i so much appreciate it and we will chat soon you bet david take care you bet